This video is brought to you by Skillshare. More about them in a minute. Are you tired of being called square? Are you feeling cornered by your sad, outdated display technology? Well, don't worry, because where we're going, we don't need corners. Actually, we probably do. Using displays without corners is very frustrating. We'll talk more about it later in the episode. That's right, round displays. They're here. Well, they've been here for a while, but mostly in the form of wearable tech. But now they're making bigger, badder, and rounder. Well, they're not technically rounder. They're all pretty circular displays, but they look awesome. You can buy them. You can use them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Also, I've broken up this video into several chapters so you can skip around to exactly the topic you most desire. And I also want to get this out of the way. All of the links to every display I mention and more are in the description. I've also added links to code and what other uh, miscellanea relate to using these displays. So check the description. If you want to buy them, please don't leave a comment asking me where I got these. I've already told you. And extra disclaimer, I have no affiliation with any of the companies that make these displays. I just think they're really cool. All right, let's, uh, let's get to it. I am genuinely excited that Skillshare is today's sponsor because I am very much a fan of self-learning. And if you don't already know, Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes for creators where you can explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and get lost in creativity. When I started learning electronics like 30 years ago, there weren't as many resources available. But I can genuinely say that picking up an Arduino in 2009 changed my life in a way that I never could have imagined, and I really wish I would started even sooner. That's why I can't recommend enough Mark Fraunfelder's Introduction to Arduino class, where you can get a grip on the basics of microcontrollers and start building cool things with electronics. But if you've already got a handle of that sort of thing, Skillshare has a lot more to offer, like classes about Raspberry Pi, Python, electronics, graphic design, and more. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, first up is this little guy right here. This is a breakout board made by Waveshare, but the specific raw LCD itself has a GC9A01 controller, catchy. It is a 1.28 IPS display with a specific resolution of 240 by 240 pixels. So it looks sharp. I used this model in my Wheatley Crab and also in my animatronic GLaDOS head as her eye. Now, to be clear, this is more of a raw component. It's not plug and play. To use this, you'll need to have some basic electronics and embedded software experience and connect it to a microcontroller platform like an Arduino. Right now, I'm controlling it with a Teensy 4.0 via the SPI bus at 40 megahertz. Of course, you can run it with nearly any 3.3 volt microcontroller at a lower bus speed, but the refresh rate will not be as good. This is one of the cheaper options that you can get and it's available on Amazon and it's pretty good. Even though, one annoying thing, it has these really nice mounting points and it comes with a uh, cable harness, but the LCD is not aligned to the PCB that accurately. So if you use these mounting points, it's not going to be centered perfectly with the center of the screen. Kind of annoying, but you get what you pay for and you don't pay a whole lot for it. Next up, I've got a bigger and tidier option. I've uh, snagged a 2.1 inch screen from Pimeroni, part of their Hyperpixel line of displays. It's also IPS, and this model is 480 by 480 pixels with a capacitive touchscreen, and it connects via DPI. So you don't need to muck about with any wires if you don't mind basically sacrificing all of your GPIO. Uh, it does have a spare I squared C bus right here. 
Configuring it is fairly easy. If you're rocking the Raspberry Pi OS, just gently pop it on, run the install script, and you're basically good to go using this for the main GUI. Where are you? I recorded the first installation live and nothing happened. I double checked the connections, I swapped out the Pies, I changed the power supply, and eventually I did a fresh, ooh, ooh, whoa. I did a fresh install of Pi OS and went through the installation script again. Spent an hour running through all of this only to realize uh, that some lower level issue was wrong. I've left a link to that solve in the description because it's way more technical um, than I can easily explain here, but it's not hard to fix. And eventually I got it working and look at that. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But if you want something bigger, well, have I got the display for you. Jumping up the scale, I've also picked up a 3.4 inch diameter LCD with a capacitive touchscreen. Now we are at the level where there are ready-made HDMI driver boards. So this one came with a board that has a mini HDMI port and a micro uh, USB for power. Technically, this board also has connections for, a, uh, for speakers and the I2C connection for the touch driver, although I wasn't able to find any uh, library or documentation for the touch driver. I'm sure it's not too hard, but that's a lot more work um, that I want to do for just this display. If anything, having the uh, capacitive touchscreen version means this has a nice uh, durable glass um, cover instead of the raw LCD. So it's a lot better for integrating, although it is still basically a raw display. I couldn't find any that already um, have an enclosure. I still need to model this one because I've got big plans for this one. And let's, uh, let's plug it in. I want to see, well, I have seen this one. I know what it looks like and I know it looks amazing. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in via USB. And where's my HDMI cable? All right. Let's see if that goes in there. I don't know if you heard the windows ding. No. Oh, there we go. Ah, look at that. So I didn't plan this the very first time I tested it, but my screensaver is obviously a uh, picture, an actual image of Mars, and it is centered perfectly on the screen, and it looks, try not to get the glare in there, it looks fantastic. I still have the protective plastic on there, so the uh, reflection isn't truly what it would be. But this one's also IPS, fantastic viewing angle. And uh, I just, I can't get enough of how beautiful this particular model is. But I hear you, this isn't big enough. What if you want a big boy, a big boy round LCD screen? Well, have I got the display? Wait, I just, I, I already said that. <laughs> That's right, kids, this is a five inch 1080p display. And as far as I know, this is the largest model that you can currently buy. And I'm sure there's more, but if anyone says, you know, call us for a quote, it's probably not um, affordable. And this is also not affordable. These currently run about 200 US dollars, but I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. Now, if you already watch my channel, you'll recognize this. Um, I have temporarily borrowed it from Wheatley because I'm building an animatronic personality core. So you should uh, stick around for that. I actually do build stuff with all these things. I don't just put them in a box and look at them and feel guilt occasionally. Anyway, this is very similar to the 3.4 inch display. There's just a ribbon cable um, with a MIPI connection to the HDMI driver board. This one is just a bit larger. Um, I've 3D printed a frame for it to keep everything nice and tidy. And one thing I didn't realize until later on is these uh, HDMI uh, driver boards are pretty ubiquitous from all the other weird LCD modules that I can tell. And what's nice is the manufacturers made the bolt pattern the same as a Raspberry Pi. So you can very neatly 
mount a Pi to one of these LCD driver boards. And in my Wheatley build, that's exactly how that comes together. So, uh, since this is just a regular HDMI connection and requires USB for power, that means we can still plug it into a regular computer. Now, here is the secret that they don't want you to know. Round displays are still just square displays. There's no polar interface with radial coordinates and things like that. It's still a Cartesian system, and this still has a driver that thinks it has a square display arranged in rows and columns. And when I plug it in, let's power that on. In case you're wondering, I have no idea what these buttons do. There's, I haven't found any documentation for these boards yet, but if you know of any, I would love to see it. So just plug it in via HDMI, nothing special, and here is my Martian screensaver. And it is, ugh, man, it's just gorgeous. So this particular model is not capacitive touch. This is just a bare LCD. But um, as far as I can tell, it's also running at 60 hertz. And it, I mean, it's, it's IPS, it's beautiful, it works. Can you actually use it though? Now, for a game like Portal 2, where you basically don't have a HUD, um, it's really not too bad. I mean, you can actually play something. Everything's really centrally focused anyway. I don't have the sound on, but uh, I mean, it looks great. Like this is, it's a modern, it's a modern display. There's nothing strange about it. It's perfectly, perfectly usable. What have you done, Wheatley? I mean, it's still perfectly usable for things that don't have um, edged focused UIs. So not too bad. Minecraft's UI is centered on the screen, so this actually works out pretty well. I could totally use this. So as you can see, uh, web browsing is technically possible, but so much of the user interface is lost in the corners that uh, it's really not practical. And that's fine. Like these aren't meant to be used as external monitors. Also, complete tangent, I forgot. Uh, I made a 3D model of this screen, so I will share the CAD files for that down below, as well as the files for the smaller GC9A01 uh, display. So if you wanna use these, um, you don't have to do the extra work to incorporate them into something that you want to build. Speaking of which, I have some other project plans aside from Wheatley that involve round screens and I want to run them by you guys and see what you want to see. So first up, I was really uh, <laughs> keen on the idea of making a dragon radar. I think it would be absolutely perfect and I think this guy would be a good candidate, the Pimeroni display. Have a little GPS in there and maybe do a reverse geocache that can find the dragon balls. That would be really fun. Also, I have my rotary cell phone design and making a rotary clamshell flip phone, maybe. I think that would be amazing. And, uh, oh well, what was the other one? Oh yeah, maybe this thing. Um, I don't exactly know what to call it because it's from some sort of old science fiction magazine, supposedly, um, but I really like it. Anyway, if you have an idea for something that you would like to see made with a round screen, leave a comment down below and I will choose one person who leaves a project idea to receive one of these guys. So you will have your very own round LCD, but if you just want to buy your own, I've still got the links in the description below. So that does it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you want to know more about any other weird displays and I am your guy.